Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 130 of my poker vlog. For this one, I've been traveling a lot around the state of Florida, playing a lot of different rooms. This one's going to be from a brand new room, Sarasota, Florida. Before I get into it, if you're unable to meet me on my travels, I play a lot of games online. Club GG is my preferred site right now. If you're interested, you can even catch me on a stream. I show a very transparent view of playing on these clubs. If you're interested, check out the link below. Now we can bet like 35-ish, set up a river jam. All right. And without further ado, let's roll the tape. I want to DJ in Daytona. Tallahassee, Tampa even. So we arrive at Sarasota, Florida, the One-Eyed Jack's poker room. We have never been here before, but we're excited to see a massive room that includes a pretty big sports book and bar area, and we are gonna get right into some action. At 11 a.m. on a Wednesday, the biggest game running is a 1-3 game, so we sit down with $500. We win a few small, less notable pots before one hand of note comes up. Under the gun raises to $10, there's one caller. I look down at Ace Jack Offsuit, Ace of Hearts, Jack of Spades. Because this table had pretty much always just limped and it's been pretty much heads up to a flop or a walk i don't think ace jack off suit's good enough for a three bet especially with a caller so i'm just gonna call play my hand in relative position and see what develops cutoff calls as well we are four ways to a flop of seven six four all hearts when it checks to me having the ace of hearts feels pretty good i think it's fine to just realize some equity here if my opponents had a straight or a made flush or any two pair they're just gonna call any size bet so i'm gonna check this one and see what develops the cutoff Cutoff disagrees. He raises to $20. The other two players fold, and what's back to me, I think it's just call, realize my equity, hope to hit a heart, and bink, we hit the queen of hearts on the turn immediately. As we don't have the betting lead, I think it'd be weird to lead out on this. I think my hand would be way too face up. So I check it to my opponent. Hopefully he throws out a bet, and he does. He bets $25. Now facing this bet, I'm really just hoping he has the king of hearts and we can get stacks in. So I'm gonna raise right now. I make it 75, but unfortunately for me, my opponent shows pocket fours before folding so actually seeing his exact hand i'm pretty happy with my raise i would hate for this to go check check river or even when a board pairs and it goes check bet raise all in cry call river so actually happy with how i played this hand and we take down a first somewhat significant hand we win a few more small ones before there's a large private one two five plo game going in a somewhat private area i get the call that i can go play over there for a bit so i add on a few hundred dollars before one hand of note where i have ace nine eight deuce double suited diamond spades and an early position player raises to 20 a middle position player calls i'm on the button with this hand i choose to just call hopefully we can flop something and win a decent plo hand well flop comes nine seven four two diamonds so flopping a pair of nines and nut diamonds i think is pretty good in plo an eight being somewhat relevant could have some backdoor straight possibilities the initial aggressor checks and then the middle position player pots it for seven nothing to do but call here nut flush draw as well as top pair think that this hand is too strong to just let go to a single bet hopefully we can make another flush on the turn but not this time the turn is the three of clubs makes five six get there which is one of the most obvious draws on the flop but my opponent checks it to me pretty happy to just check this one back hope to realize some equity or keep the pot small in case my nine is good the river is the three of diamonds awesome to hit my flush not great that the board paired i'm nowhere near the nuts especially in plo but on this card my opponent checks to me i don't think my opponent would check back any full house nines full sevens full anything three four i think he would bet all those small up to even pot so i think i can pretty happily go for some thin value with the ace high flush maybe a king high flush a straight or maybe just ace three will pay off a bet so i bet 100 dollars. no need to go full pot with it but my opponent folds and we get a decent sized pot in a pilo game I end up chopping another one where on the king queen nine rainbow board me and my opponent have jack 10 and they remain the nuts even at the river so besides these hands i'm finally called to a 2-5 table just opened up excited to play a game that i'm more comfortable with and on the first hand of note with a bunch trail of ten dollars there is one caller i raise to 35 dollars with ace queen of diamonds both the button and the small blind limper decide to call so we're three ways to a flop of jack seven seven two diamonds one club ace high flush draw i think it's good to build a pot i could have ace jack all the over pairs so with a flush draw i'm going to include this into my betting range 
when it checks to me, I size to $50. Think half pot's what I would do with all my hands, and this is no different. Both opponents fold, and we take down our first hand at 2-5 in Sarasota, Florida. Following that, an early position player raises to $20. The cutoff calls, and I'm in the big blind with ace-10 offsuit. I choose to make the call as well. We're going three ways to a flop of 10-3-6, two spades. Top pair, top kicker, feels pretty good. No spades in my hand. There's plenty of flush draws to get value from, as well as worse tens. Well, the preflop aggressor counts out 45 and then only bets 20. Kind of a weird move, but all right, for $20, top pair, top kicker can't fold. Turn is the three of hearts. Doesn't change much. Brings back to our hearts. When my opponent bets $45, I think my hand is just still too strong to fold. I beat Jack 10, 10 9, King 9, things such as that. My opponent can have Ace X of hearts pretty easily or spades and just not want to give up so i choose to make the call a second time when the river is the seven of diamonds completes eight nine but that shouldn't be too relevant in this hand and now my opponent bets sixty dollars what's wrong dog you look like you're freaking out very small bet considering the size of the pot. At this point, I'm thinking that over pairs are definitely possible, but are you really going to go for three streets with an over pair? Probably when the three pairs on bottom and you have the best two paired possible, but I still beat all the other tens. Both flush draws missed, so there are bluffs available. There are better value hands available. I choose to make the call, and a lack of discipline will cost me on this one as my opponent has pocket kings. He gets the absolute max pretty much against a somewhat pipped hand. Nice hand to my opponent. Following that, under the gun raises to $20. I look down at ace king off suit, clubs and spades. I'm gonna three bet this one. Table super deep, my opponent's super active, so it's gonna be one of the best three bet spots I'm gonna get. I make it $65. The preflop aggressor is the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of jack eight, eight, two clubs. Having the ace of clubs is pretty good, but I also think this is just a board my opponent's gonna miss a lot, unless he has exactly eight, nine, or ace, jack, or 10, nine. He's probably just gonna fold to a C bet so I go for half pot as kind of a pure bluff but I believe in myself I have overs back to our clubs but not much else 60 is gonna be the bet and it's gonna work out my opponent fold to this bet pretty happy to win a three bet pot without actually connecting in Sarasota they do a $10 PLO double board bomb pot every dealer change love to see it in this one I have ace king king five with nut hearts pretty premium hand so $10, eight players, $80 pot. And the top flop is nine, seven, five, two clubs. And the bottom board is Jack 10, six, all hearts. So we flop the actual nuts on bottom board. Nothing really going for me on the top board, but that's okay. We're going to bet $40. Don't really need to pot it. We have the nuts on bottom, but it's PLO. The nuts can change pretty regularly in this game. But to my $40 bet, two later position players decide to call. So we are going three ways to a turn card, which top board is five of hearts. Bottom board is four of spades. So we retain the nuts on the bottom board. And to this card, I really actually think that I just need my king to hit on the top board to scoop the pot. I actually looked at my hand one time and just knew I had ace king king and knew I had nuts on bottom kind of disregarded that five which is kind of relevant making trips on top but regardless we're gonna bet $160 thinking I'm just playing an over pair and nuts on one board hoping to get players to fold straights and flushes and even a set on the bottom board would be a happy fold for me and to this $160 both players fold so love the PLO bomb pot. It's a great addition to this room. You should definitely check out One-Eyed Jacks if you're interested in that kind of poker. Moving along, this is probably the biggest hand of the day for me. With an under the gun straddle, a middle position player limps, the cutoff limps, and I'm in the small blind with Jack nine of clubs. I'm gonna just limp. So four of us go to a pot of $40, $10 a piece which comes king nine seven, two hearts, one spade. Feels great to flop two pair. I'm gonna lead out small here, just try to build the pot and eye equity from hearts and straight draws and all kinds of stuff. I bet $15. The middle position player raises to 65, and then the cutoff calls. Not too happy with the situation. I really think the cutoff is possibly just have pocket sevens because I blocked the other set combinations that are possible, but there's plenty of draws, straight draws, flush draws, so I'm gonna make the call. 
On the turn, I check it to my opponent, the flop raiser checks, and now the cutoff bets 150. Kind of a weird spot, but I still think it's possible I have the best hand, so I'm not gonna give up just yet. I'm gonna call the 150 and hope to see a blank on the river to be able to continue. The middle position player calls as well. Really unhappy to see him in there. He has kind of an uncapped range of two pairs, draws, possibly bottom set, so we're hoping to see a clean river card and hope to get a free showdown, but the river is the same six of clubs. 10-8 gets there, but besides that, hearts miss, so we're kind of happy with it. I check, middle position checks, and the cutoff goes all in for $210. It could cost me all my dreams in life. Now, I really think that he just has either pocket sevens or ace of hearts. I feel like with the size of the pot, an opponent wouldn't want to give up when they feel like they have a chance of winning with a bluff. Additionally, he could have seven nine for a worse two pair. He could have six eight for the missed straight plus flush draw, turning a pair into a bluff. There's actually a lot of bluffs that make sense on this board. So for only 210 into the size of the pot, which is massive, I think my hand's just too strong to fold. So I decide to make the call. When the middle position player folds, I am very disappointed to see my opponent show 10-8 of hearts. So I was correct. He did have missed hearts. He just happened to have the one version that makes a straight at the river. <sighs> that one is disappointing. Portals! So we're actually into the game for 1300 at this point, and this is not a $1,300 stack. So we add on a little bit and hope to crawl out of this hole. And no better the way than with Queen Jack of Spades. I raised to $20 from early position. The cutoff and the button are the only callers. So we are three ways to a flop of 10-3 deuce. When the 10 is of spades and the rest of the board's rainbow, I feel pretty good about continuation betting. The board is so dry and disconnected. My opponents shouldn't connect to it too much. I have overs, backdoor straight, backdoor flush. I think this is a fine spot to see bet and hope my opponent just missed and win so i bet 40 dollars. unfortunately for me both opponents decide to call so i guess they've connected in some way but we binked the queen of clubs on the turn so we turn top pair decent kicker a lot of the time i would just check this and turn my hand into a check call because i turned some showdown value but on this particular one i really want hands like ace four four five ten jack maybe even just king x to fold all the equity they have so this is going to be one of the times where we size up on the turn and hope to just take it down when we get a very helpful turn card. Because I would also do this if I had ace king, ace jack, where I turn a gut shot plus overs. So I think it makes sense when I turn a queen as well. I bet $110. And to this bet, both players fold and we get a decent win. We're crawling back, feeling pretty good about our situation before I button straddle, with three limps to me, I look down at King Jack of Spades. This one's going to be too good to just check back. I raise to $50. The small blind calls, the first limper folds, and then the second limper, and then the actual third limper raises to 200 And he only has about 250 left in his stack. Things are bad, pillboy. So a late position limp re-raise after there's already been limpers up to you is uh, different. It doesn't happen all too often, but I think King Jack specifically just doesn't function well as a three bet defending hand, as well as the fact that the late position limp re-raise is like just aces or kings. Maybe he turned like eights into a bluff because he just saw a spot, but if he did, good for him. I'm just going to fold this one and give him credit for some of the premiums as this is the only time I saw this opponent ever do this across many hours but the stack's still doing okay we're in for 1800 we're not quite there yet so hopefully we can get some things going for us a small one is definitely gonna help before unfortunately we pick this hand up on the turn because when a button straddles ten dollars i'm in middle position with 10 four of hearts and i call don't try this at home this is horrible play horrible decision but here we are one middle position player calls and the button checks his options we are three ways to five four four two clubs one spade well, if you're going to play 10-4 of hearts, I guess it's nice to flop trips. Having a lot of the board locked up, I check it, hoping that one of the later position players can throw out a bet. Middle position checks, and the button does not disappoint me with a bet of $20. Very happy to see that. I think I can just call this street and raise on future streets. So I call middle position calls as well. So we are three ways to a turn card, which is a bink 10 of spades. What a weird full house to have. Hoping that this doesn't change anything in my opponent's mind 
behind and he'll bet again i guess he could have a four he could have over pairs maybe he turned ace 10 maybe he has clubs all those things might throw out a second bet when it's checked to him i check middle position checks and the button does not disappoint again this time he bets 45 dollars i am so happy right now i can raise this one up now get the betting lead put out a bigger bet on the river basically any river besides a five i'm feeling great with so i raised to 125 dollars this forces the middle position player out of the hand and after a little bit of thinking the button does not disappoint me he calls the pot is building and the river is even better it's the 10 of clubs if my opponent was with a flush draw he gets a flush and he's absolutely not folding anymore i want it all but still when the board is paired i don't expect a flush to call a jam all too often i could easily have four or five and i guess ace x of clubs myself and play it the exact same way so really thinking my hand looks nutted at this point i'm gonna bet on the smaller side in relation to the size of the pot i bet 175 dollars hoping to get called from a flush maybe a four maybe a random king random over pair and after a decently long tang my opponent does eventually call and 10-4 is definitely gonna be good definitely the part one to decipher and not one that you would typically see at a standard 2-5 game but the wilder hands get the bigger pots now this deck's looking good it's about 16 to 1700 in for 18 so it's nice to be crawling back very steadily before with a button straddle under the gun raises to 35 i have ace queen of diamonds i'm gonna three bet i make it 90 definitely gotta wind the three betting range and play some bigger pots to get back to even but 90 is too much the button and the under gun player fold but we pick up 45 uncontested decent continue we pick up another small one before a final hand of note a middle position player raises to fifteen dollars there's one caller folds to me on the button i have ace king offsuit again getting some premiums in the later goings of this session i raised to seventy dollars hopefully commit these opponents to more premium and identifiable hands otherwise i'll just take down the dead money the initial raiser decides to call the 70 and the other player decides to fold so we are heads up to a flop of ace 10 5 two diamonds well ace 10 and ace 5 are possible i guess but still get value from ace queen ace jack any two broadway cards for a gut shot diamonds all kinds of stuff so we're gonna size up a little bit don't want diamonds to have a good price i bet 110 dollars and this will get the job done my opponent folds and we take down another pot we chop a final smaller less notable pot before it's time to rack up and hit the cage on this day i'm in the game for 1800 out of the game for 1748 which is a loss of 52 dollars across seven hours is approximately seven dollars an hour or one and a half big blinds an hour yeah i've been on a bit of a downswing lately for the year i'm currently only up 1200 bucks on the total for the year so having very swingy sessions lately up some down some but we're going to hope to turn it around moving forward. Please stay tuned to watch the whole journey, see how it plays out, and I will see you all on the next one.